Facial recognition technology is a fast-growing market. It's increasingly employed by law enforcement, retailers, social networking sites like Facebook. But as Christina Quinn tells us, a new study out of MIT is finding the technology still needs a lot of work. The study, called Gender Shades, looks at how accurately three tech giants classify gender with their face analysis technologies. I wanted to know how the companies IBM, Microsoft, and Face++ did at guessing the gender of a face in an image. At first glance, MIT researcher Joy Bulamwini says the overall accuracy rate was high, even though all companies better detected and identified men's faces than women's. But the error rate grew as she dug deeper. Lighter male faces were the easiest to guess the gender on, and darker female faces were the hardest. One system couldn't even detect if she had a face, and the others misidentified her gender. White guy, no problem. Black female parliament member does not compute. The accuracy rate in identifying light-skinned men's faces was 99%, but for darker-skinned women, IBM's system got it right only 65% of the time. So when we're looking at these systems that are relying on data, we have to be honest about the kind of data that's being fed into it. And if programmers are training artificial intelligence on a set of images that is primarily made up of white male faces, their systems will reflect that bias. Bolanwini calls this the coded gaze. Another part of the equation could be that most programmers are white men. I think that definitely contributes to it because you might not even know to question your data or your benchmark if it's reflective of you in the first place. If you don't have a very diverse perspective, it can be easier to miss groups you're not as familiar with. This can be problematic as more industries rely on data to decide things like what you should pay for car insurance to when you're likely to commit another crime. According to the Georgetown Center on Privacy and Technology, half of all American adults are in a law enforcement face recognition network. But with no regulatory accountability, Citizens don't know how accurate these face recognition systems are and if their privacy is being violated. If this technology is flawed, it shouldn't be used in the first place. And if this technology is going to be adopted, there have to be standards in terms of accuracy standards, but not just how well the technology works, but how the technology is used. Is it even helping you obtain the main objective? By holding tech giants accountable, Bolamwini is hopeful that people will demand the same of law enforcement and the commercial companies that make face recognition technology. You have to be intentional about being inclusive because those in power reflect the current inequities that we have. And with the collective she founded, the Algorithmic Justice League, Bolamwini wants to help bridge the gap. People can report their experiences of bias online, and companies can request that the Algorithmic Justice League audit their technology for diversity. Right now we're in this place of largely blind faith. There's a lot of excitement about what AI can do. And yes, there are many things it could do, but we have to be honest about how it's being implemented. At the end of the day, who's being harmed, who's benefiting? Christina Quinn joins me now. 50% of every adult face is in one of these things? Yes, in the U.S., yep. How great is the name Algorithmic Justice League? It I really, know it's a really serious topic, but <laughs> no, is that one of great. the greatest ever? It's like a comic book hero, but, you know, doing real real life stuff. Did Joy ever hear back from any of these uh, companies? She did. So she, she did? And she got, yes, she got different res- t- responses from each one. So Face++ actually never got back in touch with her. They're the one that's based in China. Um, Microsoft did get back in touch with her um, a few weeks later in the new year. She reached out to them in December, and she, she describes it as a very corporate response. And the response is actually published in her study on the Gender Shades website. IBM got back to her the same day. They got back to her the day she reached out to them, and they invited her out to their headquarters so they we want to fix this. Oh. Um, they changed their system. They're now up to, she said, about a 98% or 96% oh. accuracy rate, but she needs to double-check that. A- yeah. Any legislation pending to protect her, either in Massachusetts? Or, no. Are no. cops using it here, by the way? So our Massachusetts State Police um, access the registry's uh, license database when they're looking for a suspect. Uh, what we don't know is what software they use. I, I reached out to them multiple times, and they never, they never got back to me. Boston Police Department does not use any facial recognition software. Um, that's what they told me. But so, again, no legislation pending that would provide no. some protection. No, here or at the national level. Christina, yeah. thanks as always for a great report. Thanks, Jim. Nice to see you.